I think our next steps are, so this was more of a pilot study. We did have a pretty small sample size. We had three groups, uh, 10 people in each group. It was a no migraine control, episodic migraine and chronic migraine. And these results were really promising because even with this small sample size, we had significant results and really large effect sizes. So I think our next steps is to just make this study larger, bigger, and get more people so that we have uh, more effects kind of to tease through and possibly try some kind of pharmaceutical therapies that are out there right now and well-known to see if that can help with uh, phonophobia hyperacusis. Um, I think I also would like to see, we in the migraine field I've noticed tend to use phonophobia as a kind of catch all to describe sound hypersensitivity. But I think there's a really important distinction between phonophobia and hyperacusis itself. They both are describing a, some kind of auditory processing or auditory issue with migraine. However, phonophobia is really more psychological. It's the fear of loud sounds. So people can feel fear when they anticipate even, you know, I don't want to go to a concert because I know that that's going to really affect me. It could possibly give me a migraine or even I can't take public transportation because it could give me a migraine on my way to work and then I'll lose work for the whole day. Um, and that's a separate measure from hyperacusis, which is actually that physiological hypersensitivity to sound that your body is experiencing and going through. So kind of teasing out just the difference between those, I think is an important distinction to make in the future.